As president of the Board of Supervisors, it's my duty to make this announcement. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. November 28, 1978. A double murder at City Hall changes San Francisco forever. Liam Maklem has new insights into the day Supervisor Milk and Mayor Moscone were shot. Dan White killed two people. He had no reason to have a list of people he intended to kill. And I was on that list. We'll talk to the stars of the movie, Milk. Hello, and welcome to Eye in the Bay. I'm Liam Maklem. In this broadcast, we celebrate the late, great Harvey Milk, a leader, a human rights activist, and America's first openly gay politician. Now, a movie has been made about his life, Milk, that tracks his life from his move to San Francisco from New York, right through to his untimely death in 1978, when he was assassinated right here at San Francisco's City Hall with Mayor Moscone. We'll hear from the stars of Milk in just a bit, but first, pals, politicians, and associates, remember Harvey. A cool November morning is shattered by gunshots, and San Francisco is robbed of two of its most progressive visionaries. It was just the most horrifying pain. I, looking back now, I, I think I really was in shock for about a year after it, after it happened. San Francisco had to be at its lowest ebb, and every citizen felt that lowness. They're pretty sobering memories. Uh, I, I was uh, just finishing up a teaching assignment uh, when I heard it uh, on the radio. You know, there was no internet or faxes. Uh, and uh, at first, you know, you can't believe it. I can still remember, and it still hurts. It was, it was so shocking to me. And he was your best pal. He was my best pal. Harvey Milk ventured to San Francisco from New York in 1972. He opened a camera store on Castro Street and a year later ran for city supervisor. I'm a little supervisor. I just got tired of our politicians and the waste of money and the disrespect for us. So I decided to do something about it. Harvey used his politics of inclusion and liberal ideology to win a seat on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 1977. Are you going to be a supervisor for all the people? I have to be. That's what I was elected for. I have to be there to open up for the dialogue for the sensitivities of all people. It was less than a year after Harvey's election into office that he and Mayor Moscone were murdered at City Hall. Cleve Jones was among the first of Harvey's friends to see his dead body. I saw his feet sticking out of the door of Dan White's office. And I, I knew it was Harvey immediately because he only had that one pair of dress shoes and they had holes in the bottom. And, you know, that was pretty horrifying for a person of my... I'd never seen a dead body before. I'd certainly never seen what bullets do. It was just the most horrifying thing. Jeff Daly and Craig Franklin were the first photojournalists on the scene that morning. Jeff Daly recounted the events of that day at City Hall. What do you recall of that day? Well, I wasn't walking up these steps. It was running uh, a full clip. Um, we were outside, ran up the steps, came into here, People didn't know what was going on. I was actually rolling as I was coming into the building, not knowing what I was going to find. There was just talk of shots fired, police were running into City Hall. Senator Dianne Feinstein was a supervisor at the time of the double murder. And the door opened, and Dan swept by. I said, Dan, could you stop for a minute? And he said, I can't. And he went in to a room. I heard the door slam and I heard shots and smelled the gunpowder which wafted down the hallway. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. The suspect is Supervisor Dan White. My knees buckled and it was just unbelievable. It was just um, I was new in the, in the news business and it just seemed like, wait a minute, this is too real. I, I, I know these people, I've covered these people, um, I can't believe this. Did you ever really think that something like that could happen? You know, I teased him 
he spoke to me often of his belief that he would be assassinated and I would make fun of him and I would say, Harvey, you're not important enough. You're not Malcolm X, you're not Dr. King. Former San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown was dealt a lucky hand by fate that November day. Dan White killed two people. He was not licensed to carry a gun, nor did he have a reason to have a list of people he intended to kill. And I was on that list. Six months after the killings of Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Milk, White was charged with voluntary manslaughter and served just five years. The gay community was outraged, and on a night known as the White Night Riots, thousands descended upon City Hall. Cop cars were set on fire, windows were shattered, the city was torn apart. White killed himself in 1984, soon after being released from prison. Thirty years since that tragic day at City Hall, the legacy of Harvey Milk lives on. And for Harvey's pals, the Milk movie does some healing and fulfills Harvey's promise of hope. Actually now I'm sort of basking in the, the joyful dimension of it because I know what a great tool it's going to be and people are going to be really inspired by it. We used to kid Harvey a lot about his hope speech, but it's really true. you got to give him hope. What would Harvey make of all this? <laughs> Harvey would be pleased as punch. Harvey was definitely a drama queen. He, he loved the, the theater of politics and the politics of theater, and I have no doubt that he, if he were here today, he would be urging us to see the film. The film Milk follows Harvey Milk's life from 1972 when he moved from New York to San Francisco. It tracks a journey to the Board of Supervisors when, in 1977, he became the first openly gay elected official in America. If these people are going to live a life of such open homosexuality, they are going to be removed from their job. Directed by Gus Van Sant, the film tells Milk's story, warts and all, showing the highs and lows of his love life and political life. We need one of our own in office. We could have a revolution here. I don't do losing. Sean Penn plays the lead as Harvey Milk. Pals of Harvey's were a little spooked by his likeness. Penn gives a shining performance. <laughs> James Franco plays Scott Smith, one of Harvey's lovers. He was the major love of uh, Harvey Milk's life. You know, he was, um, I think they were together for about four years. He, Scott ran the first couple uh, campaigns for Harvey and, and I just wanted to portray somebody that was very supportive and loving of, of Harvey. Emil Hirsch portrays Cleve Jones, a close pal and political player what in Milt's campaigns. Well, Cleve is a, he's a, he's a gay rights activist who came up with Harvey Milk and Harvey was really Cleve's mentor yeah. and uh, he's a really passionate, fiery guy who's a uh, endlessly entertaining you could say. On the night of Emile's big scene in the Castro I was actually playing an extra and Cleve Jones was looking on. How was it for you A seeing part of your life being filmed and then to actually watch it back? Well it's very poignant and kind of surreal. Uh, Emile is a lovely young man and a very serious actor. We spent a lot of time together and I think he did a great job. You're not like most homosexuals, I am. Do you know a lot of homosexuals, Dan? You have an issue. Josh Berlin plays Dan White, the supervisor who shot and killed Harvey Milk and Mayor Moscone on that fateful bleak day. A beautiful performance. Thank you. Of a very unpopular guy. Bringing Dan White to life, where did you begin? Where did I begin? You know, I just did a lot of studying and watched a lot of video, stuff like that. It's very different with this guy because I really did Thanks. want to do more of a carbon copy than in the spirit of, yeah. you know. But I, I had met his son. I talked uh, to his son for a while. I just, you know, I just wanted to be able to do it justice. This is our lives we're fighting for. During the movie here, I stood above the Castro and I'd go down the Castro to the grocery shop and I was so worried playing somebody like Dan White you know who the city has been so affected by the world has been affected by but especially the city I'm not going to be forced out of San Francisco by social deviance and incorrigibles the machine there I hope everyone sees it Harvey was a major figure in the uh, gay rights movement but 
you know, he's a, he was a man that was fighting for his rights and freedom, and I, I you know, that's universal. Without hope, life is not worth living. You've got to give him hope. You've got to give him hope. Watching Eye on the Bay, it's our milk special. Lots more to come. When we come back, we'll hear from the screenwriter who helped bring Harvey's story to life. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs>